Joining us now, Brendan Buck, former press secretary to Boehner and Ryan. He is also an MSNBC political analyst and Simone Sanders Townsend, co-host of The Weekend here on MSNBC. I'm so looking forward to that show. She also previously served as chief spokesperson for Vice President Harris. So, Brendan, this trial is already changing how Trump is forced to campaign. He stopped to greet construction workers and some of his supporters outside the new J.P. Morgan building yesterday. He went to a bodega on Monday. How do you see the media spectacle? of this trial shaping the race. Well, Donald Trump's never, never struggled to get attention for himself, and he's, I guess he's doing that again. But um, I have to disagree with, with, with Stewart on this. I don't believe that this is helpful in any way for Donald Trump to be spending his days uh, in a courtroom. Yes, he likes to play victim, but we're not in the primary anymore. Yeah, he's able to rile up Republicans and, and dispatch his uh, primary opponents pretty easily. Uh, but now we're in a general election, and you know, our own NBC polling has shown that the biggest vulnerability that Donald Trump has in a general election are these indictments, are these court cases. And if this is the context in which we are seeing Donald Trump every day, him walking in and out of a, a courtroom, that does not help him. While, you know, it, it limits his ability to go on offense against Joe Biden, who has plenty of vulnerabilities himself, and he's trying to do what he can, standing outside, riffing against Biden. Um, but look, we have wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Donald Trump being um, alleged to have paid off hush money. Like that is not helpful for him. In, I think in any context. I mean, Simone is not helpful in any context. Is there any context by which the Biden campaign could respond to this changing campaign style? Yeah, I mean, I think we saw the response, right? While Donald Trump was in a courtroom this week, um, the president was in Florida talking about the uh, abortion ban, the, the six-week abortion ban that is about to go into effect next week in that state, but also the broader implications of the health care crisis that is confronting women all over this country because... The guy in the courtroom uh, supported the overturning of Roe versus Wade via the Dobbs decision. We have seen that, you know, the president is able to go out and campaign while Donald Trump has to sit in the courtroom. I, I, I also just I agree with Brendan and I love Stewart. I, di I disagree with him on this. I think that Donald Trump looks diminished. He looks small. You know, uh, I've worked a lot of presidential campaigns, and I've, I've, I've served on campaigns for individuals running for executive office roles, whether it's governor, lieutenant governor, mayor, right? You always want to make sure that your candidate person looks, and your person is looking like, a, looking like an executive. Donald Trump does not look presidential. Amid bad fluorescent lighting in that hallway as he rails against the machine and says his constitutional rights are being trampled on and he can't speak, even though there's a camera literally right outside, he, he, he does... He looks diminished. And frankly, the grandeur, right, the smoke and mirror that has, um, that, that Donald Trump has, has so adeptly, I think, marketed himself as, you know, this larger than life personality. Uh, he came out as a pro wrestler, like a pro wrestler in 2016 at the RNC convention. That, now he's more like the, the Wizard of Oz. The wizard, the curtain has been pulled down and the wizard is exposed and the wizard is, is just a man. Mm -hmm. A man in the courtroom. Yeah, and Brandon, meanwhile, in Pennsylvania, over 150,000 registered Republicans voted for Nikki Haley in that state's primary this week. Do you see anything in that? Yeah, I, I, think, I think you can draw a direct line from that to what's going on here. He, he's re reminding everybody what they don't like about him. We are in an era of, I think, significant negative partisanship, and we know that both of these candidates have a lot of people who aren't high, aren't high on either of them. And it is this situation where the more that somebody is in the media, the more that we are talking about them, the more people are reminded that they don't like him. Uh, and that same is true with, with Joe Biden. I think the more that Joe Biden is out there, you actually see his numbers soften up a little bit. Um, certainly having Donald Trump every day reminding people what, what they don't like about him, that you know he was in, involved in all of these illicit affairs, uh, that he has uh, questionable morals and ethics, um, that he's potentially criminal are all the reasons why they didn't like him the first time, why they probably didn't vote for him last time. Um, so it's, you know, usually you want to be able to dominate the conversation. You want to set the terms. You want to be out front shaping the conversation. But this is a situation where I don't know that being being out front helps you. And it certainly doesn't help you with people who you've, you've upset over the last eight years for, frankly, overturning everything your party stood for, like the people who voted for Nikki Haley. Brendan Buck and Simone Sanders Townsend, one thing we can all agree on is that The weekend is the greatest show to be watching with Simone and everybody else. So thank you, guys. It's great seeing you.